Hey, it's Chris, and welcome back to the Between Dreams podcast. This is your look into conversations with people who are not just dreaming big dreams, but making them happen, because life is what happens between dreams. There it is. That was nice. <laughs> That's right. You've done this before. Um, today's guest is here with amazing stuff, just up to incredible things, and we're going to get into all of it. You're going to be inspired, motivated, and walk away with actual tools to get out there and make amazing things happen. It's Jade Dharma Wangza. <laughs> the breath in between. Oh, Thank you, I Chris, had... for having me. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Thank you so much for having I've me. I've been having so many people with like challenging last names. You've been and, doing a good uh, job. Yeah, thank you. It's been good. Um, so... I came across your stuff on YouTube. We were just talking about this on YouTube. Thanks to the algorithm is in favor sometimes. Everyone yes. complains about it, but no. it's like, well, it's actually sometimes kind of helpful. And speaking of algorithms, you come from a world of social media, content creation, um, consulting, a whole world of things that you help um, brands, individuals, people mm -hmm. make stuff better. Right. So talk a little bit about what it is that you actually do, because I probably did not do a good, very good job. No, it was good. It's exactly that. I basically, it's weird enough, like I started out with making YouTube videos when I was nine years old. Um, I've been doing YouTube for so long and I realized there's no one that's been teaching me how to grow up. You just self-load, like most of the stuff you DIY yourself, right? Yeah. But I realized that I really lacked um, social media tips. So I help people grow their Instagram and YouTube following and how to really grow a brand out of it. My first background was starting with working at a marketing agency, and then I started my own marketing agency helping brands grow their socials. So I, I started from a long uh, period. I was nine years old. I'm currently 17. So it's been a long journey, but I'm so excited to, to be here today. Yeah, and that's something I left out <laughs> is that you're 17. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, and, and, and the the one thing that I was initially um, – kind of blown away and amazed by is like you have you, you tend to have this like balance of confidence and like you you're your own personality but without being like that typical like youtuber like hey you look at my like hey guys, <laughs> yeah. yeah like you know and, and walking through you know uh like showing off all this stuff it's like a perfect balance of yeah i do what i do and I know what I know, but I'm not gonna come across and like try to make it bigger or more, you know, with, oh. I'm not gonna like roll up in the Lamborghini and you just see, it. and it's like all day I see those ads. You and see I'm those ads like, like swipe up by my course, <laughs> pay my yeah. bills, my car, yeah. And it's like so obnoxious. And that's why I, you know, as, as I watched through a handful of your videos, I was like, oh, this is great. It's not like trying to be this like oh. fake thing or anything like that it's like actually useful and you see that with the interaction it's like you have a great following and a community of people who want to be part of what you're doing and oh, that's like that's so much. it's just so perfect because it's so refreshing as as you know it's like the world especially in social media world doesn't necessarily always be very authentic or <laughs> mm, yeah like honestly if you watch my videos like sometimes the ads you see before my videos are the exact same people right that like do those things which is totally chill i love it but yeah not me for sure yeah so talk a little bit about what it is what it what is what is the most exciting thing that you're working on right now because you have in a, in a handful of different things like that balance of working with um brands which is a much different type of mindset and day-to-day yeah. -day than like helping individuals um and and while they're like really related um wh what m makes you most excited right now about one of those hands down um developing my app, yeah. Personal Brand Journey. So I have a passion of helping an influencer, someone who's creating a brand by themselves because I, you know, my income, my consulting company comes from brands, but I realize the power in what people, when people really need you most when they're first starting. Like when, when agencies really approach like you know, people, like that's when they are already big. Like yeah. all management, like as you know, like entertainment, it's like they, once you're big, then they come up to you. And I feel like my goal is to build a platform that help educates people that are starting from anywhere. So basically how to take your social media passion into a career, how to grow an audience, make money off of it. I think that's what I've been building. And I'm so excited because um, we just got our first like 
round of like new interns and um, I want to thank everyone who's helped me because it's seriously becoming the point where you're right like the audience that I have has been people actually helping me with my business and it's crazy to think that people really believe in it yeah yeah and it's it's so I'm just constantly amazed by people because I <laughs> I like I make a lot of stuff but then some there's like days when I'm like I don't want to I'm going to have to shoot this thing and all the time do it by myself. And it's like you keep showing up and not just to be, again, just reinforcing what I just said. It's not just to be like, oh, I'm going to show off this thing. Like everything has some aspect of a helpful, but it's not just a tutorial. That's why it was so, so cool. It's like, it's kind of like, like, yeah, specifically like I got coffee on like, with you. Like, oh, it's like a friendship, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's like you're just getting this thing where it's entertainment, but not just entertainment. And it's not just like a boring tutorial. It's like showing that thing and like Thank really you. creating engagement. Where did that start for you to be able to? Because I know everyone at home, everyone that's been in this room, me, has had these like great ideas. Like, oh, I want to make a YouTube channel. I want to make yeah. a podcast. I want to do a live theater show, whatever it is. And then like after the first attempt, it's like, well, that was way harder than I thought it was going to be. Or no mm. one watched it. And uh, I thought that was going to get, I thought that was going to be my video. So where does that come for you on the thing of, and it's this is what you've been, you know, the message that you've been yeah. creating. So where does that come from for you personally to be like, because it's like we all hit a thing where like, oh, I thought that video was going to be huge. And it, and it wasn't. <laughs> it was, it, it failed. <laughs> well, so, yeah, good question. I mean, honestly, when I first really wanted to answer this question, I'm like, I don't know. Because like in the beginning, I don't know. But this is what I found recently. So okay, pick a number. From fifty to hundred, just pick a number. Okay, can I can I do it? Yeah, just pick a number. Okay, uh, uh, um, seventy two. <laughs> okay, like this is the way I see it, Chris. Imagine I said like it takes you seventy two videos before the seventy third one will pop off. Like if I told you it takes seventy two times to fail. Can I and change my number? Up. Yeah, what is it? It's 59. Uh, okay. <laughs> 59, right? Like, what would you do if it was like genuinely that case where you only had to make like X amount of videos before the one popped off? What would you do? Yeah, you got to make videos. You're just going to fail faster, right? So like, I literally love the idea. I never saw it as that, but recently I'm like, wow, like I made, like when I was younger, I made like 100 videos in the past and it was just my fourth YouTube channel. Then everything started rolling. So that's the way I see it. I feel like, I, I'm actually really happy the more of the videos that flop because I'm like, okay, five more to go and then we're going to be there. So that's yeah. the way I see it. I mean, it's weird to think about failing fast, but that's my biggest advice. Like, because a lot of the times when you haven't built your channel, it's because you haven't done it enough or you haven't been changing enough. If you look at like my favorite thing ever, which is the definition of insanity is doing something over and over again, expecting change. So I would say trying new things and like actually failing fast. Yeah, I... um. I don't know if you know this, but I have a book called Just Go. Just it's go. about that. It says jump in and get started even before it feels like um, we're ready. And there's a chapter in there that talks about the design of how that um, what you just talked about is the best design. It's like imagine if the first video that you were super excited about was the best video and you got all that these people so to That was so boring. I would, be, I would be just like, what? Yeah. And then it would just be like, well, I now I just can't now it's gonna go downhill from here no, and, you know honestly so like when i was building my app break this was this my app has been building a year and originally like i was like, okay we're gonna like build it up to like you know it's gonna be get straight off we're gonna have all the money in the world but it didn't turn out like that like i realized wow building software is expensive and you're like hmm. <laughs> but the problem solving is actually generally the most exciting part yeah. like having the problems is super fun to me yeah so in all of these adventures you get to travel a whole bunch um, yes. that seems like a core part of what the lifestyle that you're creating and, and building. What is that? How does that fit into all? Of course, people are like, oh, I just want to travel. Oh, but yeah. then they're just like, they real, like there's, there, there's a, a work aspect to that as well. Um, what do you, what is it about being able to travel and like experience new places and new people and new, and new experiences in general that like keeps you uh, excited about that? I use travel as work. I do a lot of events across. Uh, we did one in Europe in this last winter Asia. So um, I have built communities and all I want to do is like this. Like Chris, being on this podcast makes me excited. So like face-to-face -face interaction with my, um, you know, the people that support me on YouTube and Instagram is important. So I literally plan out trips to meet people across the world. Actually, we're working on our next like creator meetup. So the next cool. like goal is to use travel as 
ways to unite and create uh, content together with other people in the community. So um, my, my next location is probably New York. I haven't announced it yet, but that's like the next East Coast is something I want to dive into. Cool. Um, what you've worked with and collaborated with a lot of people and I think the the my one of my favorite parts about being like in public <laughs> world yeah. sometimes is when um, we talked about this right before we started recording. I'll get a message from somebody who is thinking about who wants to do do a variety show or host a variety show or something, and they just how, how do I what should what should I do? They ask me questions, and mm. then then like I've gotten things like three months later, like hey, I got accepted into this festival or into this wow. show this happened several times wow. because and they were you know these people just didn't know and they just kind of needed a little bit of a sometimes it's like they we often on either side we know the answer but it's so helpful to have somebody guide us there yeah. and, and that's super cool what's something do you have any standout moments of you know either working with clients brands or individuals and their stuff where it's just like you, when you get that they come back to you and be like oh my goodness that's such an interesting Had question. Yeah, this happened, and it was thanks to you know maybe one of your videos or maybe an interaction that they've had with you. Do you have any of those that stand out as a personal, like really like <sighs> powerful ones? They're so that's a good question. I've never even asked this. Wow, good question. Um, I this was one moment I remember. It's actually kind of crazy. Like I don't know if it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. This girl has a startup in Silicon Valley about creating an app, um, but for uh, people who like makeup. So it's like a discovery place to find products. She said this and it blew my mind. In one of my meetups in San Francisco, she says, Jade, you helped me raise $1.2 million for my first round of funding. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> so she used social media to get investors and people that believe in her product. And I, that, that's it. That was like crazy to me because I've seen people yeah. who've not the money aspect, but it was the idea right. like she was in a corporate job and now she's like creating an like the idea of people pivoting from like their nine to five to like creative passion and it's unlocked through social. That's what blows my mind. Not the money. It was just generally the fact that she could go full time on her, her business now. Yeah. Amazing. I don't know if it's true, but yeah, it's, true. <laughs> it's definitely true. It was amazing. It was crazy. Can't believe it. <laughs> that's so, that's so cool. Now there's a thing that, um, I think pretty much almost everyone is battling this thing of maybe lack of confidence in their work or in their talent or in their skill or in their background or in their age or they're too old or they're too young. The age is, yeah. They have this whole thing and they're like, well, especially becoming, and, and I know you've talked about this in other platforms, but in becoming, you know, an expert whatever that means, which isn't, to, mm. I don't think is really the best word yeah. <laughs> ever to use. No. I don't think there's ever like a great way yeah. to Guru. Term of saying that word. <laughs> yeah. But you have to sometimes act like, you know, if, if someone's hiring you to do something or if you're going to turn a camera on and be in front of it, you mm. need to have that feeling of, okay, well, I know what I'm talking about, or at least I have an opinion of what I want to talk about and kind of step up and deliver because there's people who are watching and and trusting you to to do that and particularly for you there you could have a I don't and again don't want to dwell on this but like you could have every excuse to say well who's going to trust me because I'm so you know if, I, if I'm talking to a company or something yeah. and it's going to be like a 30 year old or something oh, right. and they're just like well who well, no we're not going to trust you or pay you oh for do... sure yeah first of all yeah it's you're right like most people are above in my in my work field like 30 40 and it's like obviously also like a male entrepreneur right. too so it's like really interesting but anyways that's true for sure yeah so it, it's yeah there doesn't need to be a question in there it's just like that's that's cool to see like um i was on um entrepreneur on fire and john was like yeah I was doing this speech and I had like the biggest, he, uh, you know, uh, imposter syndrome. He was like, I was like so nervous. And I was like, you have like the biggest podcast in the world. Okay. This literally happened today. Um, can I dive into story time really quick? Yeah. Okay. So I was in Santa Monica. <laughs> I told you this, Grace. I was like, I have a podcast interview, but I'm interviewing someone else. But like, 
I had the biggest imposter syndrome too. I was like, I'm going to get kicked out of this place because I went to the headquarters of this design agency. This is kind of funny because I feel like one day he's going to see this and be like, what? But I was so nervous because for some reason I thought that I was not in value because when you're nervous and you you set someone above you, you're like, I'm way down here. And and then, you know, um, luckily my intern, Nikayla, she's like, what? She's like confused. She's like, what are you saying, Jade? Like, what, what are you talking about? Why are you nervous? I'm like, I don't know. So I had the meeting. So nervous. She, like my voice was literally like, so welcome to the channel. And then <laughs> I've never had that problem. I came out of the meeting and um, I was just like, you know, wow, like that was fine. Like I though what I really learned is your brain always makes the worst assumptions. And today I learned that try to literally think about the best thing that could possibly happen and focus on that. And you'll attract that because I'm a huge believer in, you know, manifesting your dreams for sure. So um, I had so many occurrences. That's exactly what I happened. But like this happens every single time I have a client meeting. One of the companies I used to work for um, is an apparel brand. And like the CEO is like a 45 year old um, female that doesn't maybe understand social media. So I'm like, how do I convince this girl? But then I realized like, marketing okay so social media right it, there, there's an algorithm change maybe you're like also like yeah jay it's been screwing up everything but like there's always changes and with that being like if the constant universe if entertainment is always changing if there's always someone new then no one's really an expert and the people who had the degrees and the age and experience doesn't compare to anyone because everything's constantly moving so now that i see it as that where everything's changing like who does know anything no one um it gave me a sense of like you know confidence to say I'm 17 and I own it because you probably don't know much either like literally when people yeah. say me I'm an expert I'm like I just observe things and that's it yeah and if anything as you said if you're talking to somebody who's out of the social media game maybe because they are a little bit older and it's like you are even more connected it's like you are even more of a quote expert that's because maybe you're in, because I use in it. the yeah it's like that's your you know that's like in you are an expert because of that like that that um, you know thing that people are seeing as a negative is actually the biggest asset to That's help uh, be why why you're valuable and important and um, so that's great. What is for you in those moments when and it was it's just gonna pair onto the what you just said in that imposter syndrome or somebody that's watching or listening at home is saying yeah but and they still hit that excuse <laughs> they're like yeah but that's easy for you to say because you have uh, this <laughs> yeah. or i i yeah. get that sometimes that people are like yeah but that you live in la so oh. you have all these luxuries resources. you're lucky yeah and um you know, whatever it is. And I think I see that sometimes. I'm like, I have, I, I built this thing. It's my, we're in my living room and I did this. And this then <laughs> people are like, oh, well, you have that. And then I'm like, yeah, but I don't have three cameras to shoot my podcast on. Oh. So I need to wait until I do that. Oh, yeah. Or I don't have the right microphones that I want. And then I'll be motivated to <laughs> uh, make better podcasts or more podcasts more often once I have the microphones. Then I realize like once I get like those All this things, stuff, I'm like, like... I, I live in LA now and I have a little <laughs> space that I can do this thing and I'm still coming up with excuses. So it's this huh. game that never ends. And I don't think that a lot of people realize that. They're like, no, 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 really. I just need $1,000 for some gear and then I'll be good forever. 100%. Um, so where does that hit f for you? Again, you've already touched on it. Let's do a, a nice package for people to leave on. You know, w when someone's feeling in that way, when you're feeling in that way, um, where you're just like a little overwhelmed by something or something, and then you s decide to show up anyway and, and mm. create the thing or deliver or, or you're outside the meeting and you're like, I could probably say I'm sick and then walk oh, away. Where In that moment, where does that come from um, to say, Two options, I can go away or I can jump in um, and just go. So a little bit maybe a personal story if you yeah. want or uh, any additional thoughts on that to, to round this out. This is really interesting. The the white, like the idea of if only I could have this then I can start is the number one question I get. And I'm just also curious, like, do you right now, what motivated you to start the Between the Dreams podcast? Like personally for you, just curious, like you had those moments too. What got you through that? Yeah. Oh, spinning it back. I'm just curious. <laughs> um, I, I mean, this is, we, my, my buddy Kip and I have always been, we 
trying to launch ideas and we've we, we used to do magic tricks in college and we were just going out doing all kinds of really fun stuff and like kind of like building live theater shows and we were uh i was doing a show in um uh it's actually from this trip where'd you go um so that's monument valley in utah which is the cover image of the book and we were in uh canyon de shelley in arizona which is navajo reservation i was doing a lot a, the- a juggling show on, wow. on, uh there and uh what's the audience like is it, I told, is it like was it like i thought it was gonna be terrifying but they were just college students oh, that's that, sick. that that's they sick. just are they live on the navajo reservation do you get like stage fright ever by performing or did yeah, you get better totally it's always yeah that does, it's the same thing it's like people are like oh you did it you did this because i've like you know and i was like also have like a handful of like tv appearances and people are like whoa and i'm like no it's terrifying like i okay, still yeah. it's still exactly the same pro as entertainers always. still get nervous okay keep going yeah so we were in this uh this place in arizona i was talking to kip my oh, oh so i told him i was like oh, i'm going to this navajo reservation it like supposed to be awesome like meet yeah. me in albuquerque and we'll fly because we're living on the east coast at this time right I was like, meet me in Albuquerque and we'll go there. And he was like, okay. Uh, you know, it was like one of those oh, crazy like adventure things. And then we're like walking around this, this, the, the desert. And we, I think I heard like a song lyric or something that was like between these dreams of something. And it was some oh, sort of thing. And it so just cool. really resonated. And then I love the thing of like between dreams because what we've always talked about is, you know, in line with the just go. It's people dream big dreams, but what happens is what happens between those dreams. Like mm. you can't just live all day waiting to, you know. You can't manifest just be like, come. Yeah, to me, you have to do something yeah. between those dreams, and that's where between dreams was like that's life, and that's where action happens. Oh, that's so cool. I that's I was like generally wanting to know that question because I was asking earlier. I mean, I have a similar story, Chris. Like, well, I dropped out of high school, so for me personally, like. I don't know if this sounds like bad, but like I had no choice other than to go like the hard route. The easy route wasn't an option. It was like I cut the cord already by leaving school, leaving my career, going to USC film school, like wanting to be essentially just a corporate person, which is amazing because that's what I originally wanted. I cut the cord. So like personally for me, there was no excuse. I couldn't be like, I need to wait for the next camera because the time was now. Hmm. I think what I recommend is when it's that- a bit mo- of force, you know, it, if, if, if so deadlines are pressure. the best. Well, and sometimes you can force that. Like Truly, like I think this is the thing. Having too much abundance and resources, like we have all the, like you and I have all the gear and people like that will look at us are like, wow. But that's actually the thing that could kill you the most because when you have pressure and a lack of resources and there's- only so much you can do that's where you can actually get really creative you come up with problems imagine you had everything okay you have the la apartment say like you lived in like downtown hollywood you live next to the best directors you have the equipment like anyone could be successful the reason why entrepreneurship and i said this before but like the reason why entrepreneurship which is currently anything you do creative is what it is is because the word entre latin root means taking risks and if you take out the word entre out of entrepreneur what are you doing you're literally just you know going if you wanted the answers to everything have all the equipment you're not really playing the game so i saw it as that i took out school i took out all the excuses you could literally cut your friends out you could just literally not have you can only have an iphone and that's where you want to start i generally believe my friends who are wealthy and well off and i didn't really come from much i you know moved um, i lost my home a few times for my parents job I remember I was so happy that I had nothing and I'm, I hope people can experience that because all my friends, my cousins are like wealthy and rich. Love you cousins. But you know, they don't, they like, they look at me like, how do you do that? And I'm like, mm-hmm. it's called going through absolute sh- shit. So um, that's what I really kind of remembered. It's like not having resources is actually the best blessing ever because you're able to be creative. Yeah. It's great. No excuses. No excuses. Just go. Make it happen. Let's go. <laughs> All right. That is great. Think that's um, just um, amazing stuff. And I love that just the mindset of when you, if you have a bunch of stuff, that's not going to solve the problems. No. It's now you're still going to have to turn the, the camera on and Dude. start talking, which is usually the hard, you know, it's to turn it on and start and then edit it or Delete it and start it over publish, again and do it again. Publish, just hit publish. Okay, so love you, dad. My dad's a part of my, he's my mentor. So if you're curious to know where my business advice comes from, shout out to you, birth giver. Actually, that's not my birth giver. Anyways, um, <laughs> my dad has like bought in so many cameras to start his YouTube channel. He bought a Sony A7, another vlogging camera, then this. And I'm like, dad, 
Hey, just hey, uh, start. <laughs> so if anything, if anyone is listening to this, Dad, we're talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> and I know we're talking to more of yes. you than that. So thank you so much for joining. Thank um, you so much, Chris. If you're listening on audio only, you can listen with your eyeballs as well. That's called watching because <laughs> we're on YouTube. There's a camera here. And um, uh, thank you for watching and listening. Uh, available everywhere um, that you listen and watch podcasts. You can figure it out if you are listening to it you've already done so wow um <laughs> and where can we find more if we want to hear uh check out more of your stuff on all the fronts so i wish my um last name was a little shorter but if you search jade dharma wangza j-a-d-e on instagram youtube email twitter anything i'm here to answer your questions i make videos a lot about social media so request anything if you have a question below let me know amazing Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you for watching, listening, and that's it for now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Because that's so fun.